Hi Home Talkers, how are you today? I'm Sharon and I blog over at the blog I Restore Stuff. So it's i-restorestuff.com and I'm here today to show you a fun way to update your welcome mat or your area rug and it may have gotten a little bit worn, weary, tired, stained even but we're going to show you something today that will uh, really transform it and you'll be able to be proud of it again and not so, oh my goodness I'm so embarrassed because we have this ugly looking rug. <clears throat> so let me know where you're tuning in from, I'd love to um, hear where you're coming from. I'm from Australia if you can't already tell by my accent uh, so, and I'm here today with my lovely sister who's come to help me and Leanne is <laughs> Leanne's going to be feeding, you, feeding me some uh, of your questions. So if you have any questions as we go, let me know. And don't forget that Home Talk will be putting up the giveaway question at the, top, at the top of the post for your chance to win a Home Talk tote bag. So looking forward to seeing how we go. Let's get into it. What I'm going to need today is because we are going to be, oh, let me show you my rug first because, you know, this is pretty, pretty gross. And if you saw my uh, Home Talk post, you will have seen uh, a smaller version of this um, rug that we had, had at our front door. Um, so you can see we've got a couple of stains here. We've got a big kind of wet looking stain over here. I'm not sure if you can see that. We won't even mention probably what that is, but it's okay. We're going to paint over it. So we're going to be using paint today. Um, I'll need my trusty newspaper because for stenciling, we need to use that. Um, and I'm going to be um, using a whole bunch of stencils that we've got over here. So have we got people tuning in from all over the world yet, Leanne? We do. We have people from Ontario. 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 Canada. Canada. Lots of people. The Canadians. Canada. Yeah. North Carolina. Woo. Hey, Bobby Roberts. Hey, how are you going? <clears throat> okay, so what I'm going to start with is this huge clock. Um, I thought that would make a great centerpiece. So um, as we go along, if you've got any questions on stenciling, let me know because I'll be showing you my pro tips, but maybe you've got something uh, better that you know and you want to share with us. So what I'm going to do is I'll be tipping my paintbrush into the paint tin, but what we want to do with stenciling is really brush off and dry that paint off as much as we can. And I'm using a lovely dark grey ash colour today. Now because what we're going to do to reveal a little bit of what we're doing, look I should have measured this Leanne, am I going okay? What do you think? Is that centred? Yeah, I, I really should centre it. But this is all about rustic and doing things quickly because we're on Home Talk Live. So when we're going to stencil, I've got the brush, it's pretty much dried off. I want to get my, um, I'm a bit of a swirler. I learned how to do the swirling method as opposed to the stippling or going up and down like this. I don't know if you can see how I'm doing this. Up and down. Um, I find that the swirling, especially in this case, we're working on a jute rug. Is it jute? Would you say jute? Leanne, I'm calling it jute, but... Or well, another word for it is sisal, maybe. Some other people call them different things, but it's that really uh, thick, dense, fibrous stuff. Yeah, I'm not up with all the design lingo, so we're just um, winging it here. So we're just going really roughly, and the reason for that is because we want it to look fairly rustic and hand-painted. We don't want a perfect stencil, but we do want our little um, areas to be shown. We could even do. So what's the giveaway question again? What would you paint on your rug? And we may even, have they typed that at the top of the they have. home tour? They have, some great ideas coming through. Someone All right. Paw prints. Paw prints, that's a great idea. Especially, Mickey Mouse. what was that, sorry? Mickey Mouse. Oh, Mickey Mouse, some Disney fans out there. Yeah. But Cindy suggested maybe um, a puzzle for autism awareness. Ooh, I, really I, ooh, I like that idea. Whoops, if you're um, really, uh, <coughs> <clears throat> not careful, like I just wasn't then, your stencil will move, so what you can do is use trusty painter's tape to keep it in place, but because I'm in a hurry, I thought I could, I thought I could do this without putting the painter's tape on. <clears throat> Here we go. I haven't used this clock stencil before, as you can tell, um, and most stencils, you should be able to just wash them straight off in water with maybe a little bit of, because, you know, 
they're used over and over. I don't know, do you, let me know in the comments, do you wash your stencils off straight away or are you the kind of person who will just leave the paint there, let it dry and just hope for the best? Let me know what people are thinking, Leanne, because, you know, I'd love to know. But what I do, if I've only just used it, if I can wash it straight away, I'll do that. Um, and the best thing to use to wash your stencils off with is just that non-abrasive kind of, it's not steel wool, what do you call that? Those scourers that you use for your dish washing, you know, the, like the green coloured ones that aren't metal, they're not the steel, steel ones. So, what I thought, you know what, oh, I wanted to give a shout out to for my inspiration for this rug, and she doesn't even know that I'm going to be shouting her out, is another blogger um, called Bliss Ranch, and she did this kind of, her inspiration, my inspiration for this rug was after seeing her blog post that she did this kind of a subway art thing. She did it on a pair of wingback chairs, yeah. So a big shout out to Bliss Ranch, because this is my inspiration. This was my inspiration. Oops, a few little dots missing there. See how quick that was just to do that. We got some questions? Oh, just Dorothy made the comment that she cleans later with alcohol. Oh, that's a good idea. And that, oh, yeah, that would come off really well. Okay, so now, look, we've got a bit of a centerpiece. Now, what also inspired me about Bliss's, um, I'm making more stains as I go. Um, Bliss Ranch's blog post was she did this on wingback chairs. So look at these wonderful stencils that I've got here. I just pulled a bunch out of my stencil collection, which is vast and varied. And I'm going to make some kind of like a bit of a subway art thing happening here. And you can place your stencils any which way. And Leanne, I know, you know, I need your help to just kind of a little bit of arranging here because you're the arty one, <laughs> pressure. Leanne is actually a really good artist. So, <clears throat> and at the same time is, you know, read the comments, but you know. So what she did was, what Bliss uh, Ranch had done was added a little family, um, made it a family thing and added little birth dates and things like that that were a bit, you know, um, meant something to her family. So I can only go with what stencils I've, kind of got around the place but see like this one for example dream big little one just reminds me of the kids when they were little they're not so little anymore we've got four grown-up children and um, saying to add touches like handprints and yeah footprints. that's a great idea handprints footprints um, you could add there so how am I going for placement maybe need a bit of yeah, separate, them separate those yeah. little things. What about coffee? That's really important. Coffee in our family. <laughs> it's a bit of a Marty. The, Marty my husband's the cameraman today. Yes, babe. <laughs> maybe. You want to center it, maybe. Yeah, we could put what coffee in the center. Is co coffee the center of our life? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the other thing I do have is an arrow that we could make for our clock here. Um, and just thinking of a time, I don't know. Maybe twelve o'clock would be a good time. So. If you want to jump up, or if you know, you can place some more. We've got numbers here that we can add birth dates and things. We've got some more coffee beans and um, farmer's market. And see how grocery, you can stick them up the side there. So you're kind of getting a general idea of where we're going with our rug today. And you wait. This is going to be the speediest um, stenciling job I've ever done. So what paint are you using? <clears throat> Okay, so maybe people are asking what paint I'm using. Today I'm using Fusion Mineral Paint, which is just a furniture paint. And it's an acrylic-based paint, so you could probably use any acrylic type of paint that you've got. Um, you know, some of the chalk paints on the market now, they're pretty good at painting on fabric. Uh, so because be this being a fabric rug, look how quick and easy that was and how cool that stencil looks and even afterwards you know see the idea is not to make it perfection so you can just leave little areas I don't know should I I could pick a time like what, what was the time we got married I don't know that could have been it was probably three o'clock in the afternoon I'm guessing two o'clock he says he says two o'clock now you've got me thinking I have no idea two. and Marty says two all right, Leanne, you better jump on the comments yeah. in case there's anyone who's... Thank you so much for doing that. Um, I'm going for three. Now I've got to look it up. I'm going to have to do that one. I'm going to have to do that one later. Just <clears throat> He's just totally guessing. He has no idea. 
Let me go for the grocery sign next. So, I don't know, have we got people there who um, prefer to stipple their brushes when they're doing their stenciling or swirl them? Did you have any of those kind of comments before? Or is there any more questions? Now, of course, you can use painter's tape, but today I'm just going to go for it and move fairly quickly. And as you can see, look, I'm hardly even, some of these are going to be a lot lighter than others. Here's an idea for you. Yeah. Shelley suggested a 3D manhole and see, see if people walk around it. Oh my goodness. Now, that's something you could probably do, Leanne, because you're the artist. <laughs> a 3D manhole. What a great idea. See the map and they'd have to be forced to walk around it. You could do lots of great 3D ideas. That's awesome. <clears throat> Wow, so see how quick we've just done that grocery sign there. I hope your husband's watching today. Did Kev say he was going to watch? Because he, um, Leanne's hubby Kev, big shout out to big Kev out there, had uh, a knee operation and is supposed to be putting his feet up today. So we told him he has to, has to uh, be watching Home Talk. So Kev... If you're not watching, you're in big trouble. And if you are watching, you need to send us hearts and likes. Speaking of sending hearts and likes, everybody, here we go. There's the grocery sign stencil. How's that? See how it looks a bit rustic and rough? And we'll move on down to the antiques. You could do these lots of different colours. What I was going to say is, um, speaking of hearts and likes, please jump over to the little share button and go share this, um, share this, what am I calling? Home Talk Live with your friends and family on your page because you can actually hit the share button and it'll bring you straight back. You won't have missed out anything. So just do that for me, will you? Hit the share and um, then lots more people can learn how to... Oh, if you've just joined us, this is what we're doing. Um, I'm Sharon from Australia and we are transforming an area rug and giving it a revamp because it had quite a few stains and it was looking pretty old and shabby. So are we liking the ideas so far? If you, oh, just remember the giveaway question is, what would you paint on your area rug? And we're getting some fantastic ideas coming through. Aren't we, Leanne? Suggestion just writing um, your favourite inspirational quotes. Yeah, absolutely. A family rug. That's a great idea. Actually, I might do that, and, but I'd have to probably think about it a little bit later on, is add, because, you know, this is going to take a while, so um, I can add so much to it, but I might add my favourite Bible verse quote in there. Do you have a favourite, Leanne? What would you put on if, it, if you had a family Bible verse? What would that be, or inspirational verse? I do love Proverbs I put you on the five and six, but yeah. I, I was going to say, I put you on the spot. <laughs> what does it say? Proverbs 1. Proverbs 3? Yeah, what does it say? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Yep. Awesome. That's a great one. I love that because that applies to all of our lives as well as our kids. Look at that. I know you can change this established 1901 and I could have changed that, which I don't know how I can change it now, but there's some little numbers around here somewhere that we can actually add the numbers to. People are wanting to know yes. where do you get the large stencils from? Um, these, well, most of the ones, are oh, the big word ones are f um, from Do uh, Donna, from Funky Junk Stencils. And um, she stocks them, or, sh or she distributes them, I think, through a lot of the fusion retailers. But isn't that cool? Antiques and collectibles. I just love the way that's coming out, sort of not stark and... Um, it's got a bit of a rustic edge to it. Am I going okay, sister? Awesome. Ooh. So this one, dream big little one, I think we spoke about that before. If you've just joined us, we are transforming my area rug and putting some huge stencils on it to just give, us a, give it a different look. Um, if you did see my Home Talk post this week where I've actually done a demo on how to do this you will have seen a different look and you could do this too I used a patterned stencil so you can use you know like a Moroccan stencil or spots or all those kind of there's some beautiful patterned stencils that are out there now look at that it's looking great it's looking fantastic 
Now, beach house. What does that have to do with us, Marty? Does that mean that we're in for a move to ready to go to the beach? Because we're not living anywhere near the beach right now. Honey, don't you remember where we went on our honeymoon? <laughs> if you missed that, he said, don't you remember where we went on our honeymoon? <laughs> we did go to the beach. So this one <laughs> represents our honeymoon. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> we're just finding stencils and making up that they represent something, really. But, you know... You seriously could put all sorts of beautiful things on here. How are those ideas? Are they coming in some more ideas for the giveaway question? You can get to win a Home Talk tote bag. If you make your question known in the comments, your answer known, what would you paint on your rug to Did change it up a, a bit? A page from your favourite children's book? <clears throat> Ooh, a page, as in like write out the words to it. Maybe, with an mm. illustration that would be yeah, that would be cool. Like an illustration from a, a family kids, tree. Kids book. Ah, oh, family tree, of course. That sounds like a great idea. Um, I'm going up here to Route 66. I love this one. Now, I'm seeing a little bit of a stain here. Do you reckon I should just go over this one? Move it over here a bit? I can always feel, see that stain. If you've got a stain that you want to cover, brilliant says. I'm going to just put that right there so it kind of covers that up a bit. What kind of brush are you using? Look, I don't even know. I was given this one, so it just says Art Butova. But it's just a... It, look, it feels like a natural bristle brush, actually. So I'm sorry I can't answer that one very well, but it just says it's an art brush, I'm guessing. Um, so it was given to me. Route 66 represents... A few things, actually. If you didn't know, here's a fun fact. I, um, Marty, my husband, who's the wonderful camera guy there, is, was actually born in the USA. And so this kind of, you know, Route 66 goes a long way across the United States of America. So hey to all our American friends and family out there. I know Marty's sister still lives there and she'll be watching. Hello, sister. So Route 66, we actually went there. At Christmas time, we took our four kids on a huge trip, big trip, um, across to America to visit family. And we actually went on Route 66 and went to the very end of it. Is it? Did you go there? You went on a big trip too. You took all your kids a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, but we didn't do Route 66. We, did, we didn't drive the whole Route 66, but we actually... Went to the very end of it, and I think it's Santa Monica Pier. Is that right, do you think? Um, someone can correct me in the comments if I said that wrong or got the wrong place. Um, <clears throat> okay, bed and breakfast. That's going to go up here. Do you think an angle or what? Like this? Leanne, you're laughing. What's so funny? Oh, Jerry suggested um, they'd paint Waldo so everyone knows where he is. Oh, <laughs> I love it. But you That's could a great do idea. Hidden things in your mat. You could. The kids have to look for. Exactly. That's a great idea. You could make it a kids. Um, imagine kids rugs for the playroom. You could go crazy with that. So bed and breakfast represents um, what? Pretty much our teenage years. <laughs> Sleeping in bed and um, expecting breakfast. But I do remember, and you'll remember this. Leanne's kids are about the same age as our kids. Um, those days where you got so excited because the kids could actually make their own breakfast and you didn't have to get up and do that. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. That season of life, it was just like, oh, bliss, we have arrived. <laughs> it's the little things in life. Can anyone relate? Shout out, give a big heart. Yes. Do your kids still need to be fed breakfast or can you let them go? And sleep in. So this is bed and breakfast stencil. Again, if you're worried and you've got more time than I do right now, you can tape your stencils down and they would be better placed or stuck down better with some painter's tape. Oops, I just realised I've gone a little bit over the edge there. A bit of a smudge. But you can get a good idea of where we're going with this. With the paint, also awesome. permanent? Or do you need to seal it? Um, it will stay there. You won't be able to wash it out. Uh, you, can, you could try and seal it if you like, but really I, I'm not going to. 
but if you did want to. So I've done this, I've painted with this paint on a t-shirt before and all I did to seal it was um, I ironed it with a warm iron to kind of set the paint in. <clears throat> Here's a good one. Um, compass. Have I got that up the right way? I'm doing this upside down so I'm just making sure you know you don't want your compass looking like that because that would be bad. Okay, north, south, east, west. This can just represent so much. And See this paint's dry already so I'm just going to sit down on it. Um, compass can represent so much in our life as a family, can't it? Oh boy, we could have some great discussions on that. <clears throat> compass. Are you in the right place? Are you doing the right thing? Read your direction in life. We could get really deep here on Home Talk Live. <laughs> but look how quick that was just to stencil a, a little compass. We could have a few of those. Kathy and suggested yep. um, maybe a family crest. A what could, family, crest. family crest? Oh, yeah. You could design your own, I guess. Oh, yeah, you could. That's a great idea. I like that. There are so many wonderful ideas coming in. Don't forget to, um, I was thinking this morning, you know, there's probably some super creative people out there and I'm going to put a challenge out to you. If you haven't already got a profile on Home Talk, like hometalk.com, get one because you've got so much to share and I think that there's people out there who um, need to just post some of their fun ideas to share with the world. So if you go into hometalk.com and you don't already have a profile, make one up. It's so much fun. You can just add photos, um, show people step by step how you did your fun creative project and um, yeah, it's such a great way to meet other people and other DIYers, see what creative and crazy things people get up to and uh, you know, especially in the area of recycling because we tend to throw away so much stuff and like for example, this rug could have just been thrown away ditched, taken to the dump as we'd say here in Australia but instead we're giving it a whole new lease of life and it's actually a great conversation piece I think. What do you think Leanne? Christy a... shouts out, she lives 10 miles from Route 66. Oh yay Christy, what part of Route 66? It's probably a great big long road. That, isn't that the one that was in Cars, the yeah. animated movie? Mater, he's my favourite. Mater, he's your favourite? <laughs> so you can see where we're going with this. Looking awesome. Um, coffee beans. We need to stick some coffee beans down here, I'm thinking. Under the coffee roast sign. And like we said, you can add so much more to this stencil, uh, to the rug as far as quotes and all of that kind of stuff. Now, I'm thinking here's another great idea. Stay tuned. If you've just joined me, we are revamping and giving a subway look to this area rug. I'm thinking some, uh, just you can just chuck stencils over the top of each other. But here's something I think we should do is I'm gonna go maybe about a third of the way and make some grain sack stripes, Leanne. What do you reckon? Oh, I think they look really effective. For those joining late, they want to know again what type of material you're painting on. Oh, so this is a jute rug. I think I call it jute. Sizal, sizal, whatever you say. I don't know if I'm saying that right. So I don't know if you can see the rug close up. but And the type of paint. Have I got that straight? <laughs> They'll let me know, won't they? So what I'm going to do now is just create some really quick grain sack, grain sack stripes. You know, like this type you would see on an old grain sack. And yes, I'm covering up some words, but what we're going to do is paint in that middle bit. Do I need to make, maybe I'll just do one thin stripe, one fat stripe, like that. And if I was really thinking about it, which I'm not thinking very well, I would probably just make sure I'm not covering up important letters, but you can kind of still see what the words say, can't you? Is it going to look okay? What do you reckon? Yeah. Please don't send me angry faces, send me love. <laughs> I'm thinking there's probably people going, what is she doing right now? Hey, make your own rug and make it your own. Well, Denise loves the clock face. Denise loves mm -hmm. the clock face. Thank you, Denise. I think that's cool too. Now, here's my 
top tip, we can just do a really faint grain sack stripe like this. And guess what? You can still see the words. So, do you still love me? Do you still love me, people? <laughs> Thanks, Denise, for loving the clock. We got any other great ideas? Don't forget, you could win a Home Talk tote bag if you just answer the giveaway question that's pinned to the top of the comments. What would you paint on your area rug? And if you notice, I'm going over the edge there. And that's quite okay. Okay, how's this? And we lift it up. Wow, what's that look? All right, doesn't it? It's not too bad. Get creative, people. Okay, so what I want to show you now is um, important too. Maybe I'll work on this corner down here. And I'm just going to sit right on the paint. I've got my painting pants on, you can see, so it doesn't really matter. As I want to show you how we're going to do this edge here because, as you can see, this does get dirty and stained as well. So this is an important part of the process of revamping your rug. And what I'm going to do is tape off the edge right here so that we don't get paint on there. And I'll just do a small section so you can kind of see what's going on. There we go. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button too when we finish here today or you can, I don't know if you can do it at the same time, but you'll be able to subscribe to Home Talks Live. Oh my goodness, who was that? <laughs> you are in so much trouble. <laughs> That's a very rookie mistake. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Home Talks calling. <clears throat> Now, what was I saying before I was rudely interrupted by Marty's phone? His, um, yeah, subscribe. You can subscribe to Home Talks, Home Talks Live DIY so that every time Home Talk goes live, it pops up and <clears throat> says, Home Talks Live. Do you want to come and watch? Now, I should really be having paper underneath here, but what we're going to do is paint these edges. So let me grab some newspaper here. <clears throat> Are there certain colours that work better on the jute mat? Okay. Well, Leanne, I think you can answer that question. <laughs> You're the artist. Um, so, yeah, what colours? Because, you know, the grey, the ash grey kind of stands out, doesn't it? But what about white? What would you think about white? I just kind of thought it might get a bit dirty. But what do you think as far as colour colours, you know, like not your black or white? Leanne, question for you, my dear assistant well, sister. I'm loving this look. But you can also do the stripes in different colours. Yeah, the, that's what right. What room you're putting it in. What you don't See, that would, the stripes would look good in the, like a, a soft whitey grey mm. kind of colour, wouldn't they? Great idea. And yes, like you said, depends on the room you're putting it in. Now, I could probably go a bit thicker with this paint. I'm kind of in stencil mode. But you could go as rough or as... as um, little as you want on those edges but um, if you really you know don't want the rustic look and you want to get every little piece just make sure you get in the stitching because the stitching is where it will sometimes just show those um, the underneath color and this color isn't so bad because it's a tan but the one that I did on my home talk blog post that I will show you it's back here but I'll show you in a second it was a bright blue and I changed it to a midnight blue, a really dark blue. And so seeing that bright blue underneath was not a good thing. So I wanted to cover that right up. <coughs> All right. said she would do anything nautical. Yeah, nautical is a lovely, fun thing. Billy so, said that <coughs> they work from home and probably put a business card. Oh, yeah, what a great idea. Yeah, especially, if, yeah, because of welcome mat, mm. that would be a great idea business card. Whoops, a little bit thick on the paint there. Okay, I'm going to give you another handy tip about doing the sides here. I should get my paint out and paint this thing. Um, when the when you mat, especially these kind of rugs, if it does have an edge, some of your rugs may not have an edge like this. This is like a big bias binding kind of tape that goes around the whole edge. 
Uh, but if you can see the corners, they tend to tip up a little bit sometimes. So my tip for you is to go around, when the rug's completely dry and finished, is to flip the whole entire rug over and make sure you get these bits at the back here. So let me just show you for example. You just want to get those little bits at the end or you can go right around with the other rug. I went right around the whole lot because just I was being fussy. <clears throat> Had a moment there that I was being fussy about something. Okay, so because the, the rubber part isn't going to be seen, but just when it tips up at the end, you know what I mean? You can um, stop that from showing the old colour underneath. So just make sure you get that completely done like that. All right, what other questions do we have for people that we can ask? Have you ever been, um, oh, what's the weather like in your part of the t country, in your part of the world? There's people from all over. Actually, you know what, we're going, because we're in Australia, we are down under. I know a lot of you are from America, so we are going, we're in autumn right now, your fall, whatever you like to call it. We call it autumn in Australia. And so we're going into winter, so we're starting to get a little bit cooler weather, but I know you guys are heading in for summer in the northern hemisphere. So what are your plans for summer? Does anyone have any special plans for the summer? Love to hear where you're going, what you're doing. Hey, come to Australia. That's a great idea for you. I'm just going to throw that out there. <clears throat> Let me know if they got some great summer plans, Leanne, because maybe we could pick up on some of those and go places for our winter. Said in Canada, it's spring and rainy. Spring and rainy. Okay, we've had a, our fair bit of rain here lately too, haven't we? We had a cyclone the other week. It's probably almost a month now that we had our cyclone going. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to just get, finish up here in a second. I wanted to show you the mat that I did on the Home Talk post. Right behind me here. Is there a reason why you choose that style of brush and that technique? Okay. You mean that's in the stenciling technique? Yeah, the or the way I hold it? Or the oh, the stippling and the swirling, yeah. Because I just found it a lot easier. I didn't know about the whole swirling method of stenciling. If you missed that part, you can rewind later when it goes live, when the live's finished. But I was showing how you can either stipple when you're stenciling like so or you can swirl like this and I just found that the swirling method really got into what I was working on a whole lot better and if you especially use a dry brush so you can see that my brush has hardly any paint on it well it does for this part but when I'm stenciling hardly has any paint on it it really uh, doesn't get underneath the edges of your stencil so when you're stenciling, you've got to be careful not to get underneath. I'll just do another stencil example here and I'll throw some more coffee beans out there into our mat land. Where can we add the coffee beans? We just need to maybe throw them in this corner, I think. So here we are. I've got most of the paint off my brush. Um, and the type of brush that I'm using, I probably haven't used this one for stenciling before, but when you're choosing a stencil brush, I just like to make sure that the, the bristles aren't too long because then you've got lots of bend, whereas a shorter, what do you call that, shorter bristle brush mm -hmm. will be easier to actually do the swirling or the stippling no matter what you choose. This one's actually got a bit of a dome shape to the end, which helps to get into the rug, the sizal parts of the rug. So I found that a good thing. Uh, but like I said, this is the first time I've used this one for stenciling. And, but it's working great and it's a natural bristle brush. But you could use any brush really that's got a lot of bristles. So you don't want to choose a thin, you know, thin type of brush. You want, to, want one that's got a lot of bristles. So what we're doing is swirling around like this. Very easy, done. You can do the stippling if you like. But I have found it's in this, especially this jute rug, it's not showing as much. So do a little bit of swirl and it kind of pushes it in there. 
A few more ideas coming through. Oh, I'd love to hear them. Ruth was suggesting to put the saying, home is where the heart is, and then oh, have yeah. the addresses of all the houses we've lived in. Oh, what a great years. idea. Yeah. I love it. That is so good. I'm loving those ideas. Keep them coming. So like we said before, you can use that grain sack stripe idea and use that in, do that in a different colour. That would be a fun thing to do. I'm going to show you my <coughs> rug that I did on my Home Talk blog post. Here's one I've prepared earlier. So this is the same technique. So the welcome mat at our front door was looking rather shabby. And I just used this pattern stencil. And you can use a, any pattern. I can't find the one that I was using. But it's probably about this big. So then you just move it, place it to the next spot, but make sure you're lining up all of your edges as you go around. So most pattern stencils will come in like a, you know, a, so a certain size and you just can shift them and the pattern will repeat over and over. So that wasn't one great big stencil, it was this big. So then we just move it, stencil the next part, move, stencil the next section. So now um, our welcome mat, and they'll probably, the Home Talk people will put that link where I've made this mat and you can see how I've painted the edge and you'll be able to see in the post the bright blue that it was originally and this is now a dark navy blue called midnight blue that's going to go a lot better with my house colorings anyway um, but it's really revamped the mat and made it look a whole lot better than what it was because it was really dodgy so um I just want to, I think we're done, but, and you can get an idea, and I'll have to finish it off later and add more stuff, but Home Talk's going to pick a winner. I don't know if they have already, um, but we will find out who that winner is, and they will win a Home Talk tote bag. I just wanted to remind you of a couple of things. Don't forget to visit hometalk.com, make a profile, share your awesome DIY ideas. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button at the end of this broadcast, and... We are live again with Home Talk here, right here on the Facebook page, with another live DIY tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So don't forget to tune in then. Is there a winner? Do they have Home Talk? Have we picked a winner? Because those ideas, are there any more ideas you can share with us? Because some of those ideas were just fantastic that we have had coming in. Michelle had suggested making a mat with all the things that reminds her of a mum, which I thought was a beautiful oh, idea. Oh, my goodness. That is so beautiful. Yes. Another suggestion was a travel rug, so all the places you've been. Oh, so you may have those I love old it. suitcases yeah. with stickers on it. Yep. Yeah. So there are other ways of actually adding graphics to rugs without doing the stenciling, because you might not have a stencil, obviously, for all of those things that you can think of. So if you've got ideas, you can add in the comments of where or how you could transfer those graphics onto a rug. Please share them. One way I know would be to do um, the carbon paper method and just kind of trace oh, yeah. around, because I think for a, a dense rug like this, that would work. But you might have some ideas, Leanne, of doing that. Could, would you use a projector? You could project something onto it and trace around it or something. What would you do? <clears throat> Let me know when they've picked a winner because so you're holding my breath. I know, I think that Home Talk's having a hard time trying to choose. <laughs> there are so many. There's so many good ideas. So many. Mermaids. Woo. Stick people family. <laughs> oh, yes. Beach themes. Yep. I've got some other great oh, signs. Yeah? We do have a winner. We have a winner. Are we ready? Dun, 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 drum roll. Brrr, ding. And the winner is... Congrats to Michelle Grazier. You are the winner. Michelle Brazier is the winner. Congratulations, Michelle. What was her idea? Did she, do you remember? Can we scroll back? But if you can scroll back, you can see what her idea was. I'm going to keep going here with our rug, and you're going to keep commenting and liking and sharing and hitting subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Home Talk Live for another great DIY. See you later. Bye. <laughs> Bye.